for lack of a better word, is good. Read it right. Read works. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 22 of Let's Play Wall Street Raider. I'm Rakem, your host. Last time out, we went from 84.8 trillion all the way up to 92.4. And uh, most of that is due to some success with Rakem Insurance. His uh, stock price rose from 30 to $35. And uh, we took advantage of uh, that increase and we expect it to continue, especially if the interest rate remains high. Um, but we were primarily concerned with our options experiment with Hagemeyer and things are going very well with him. But uh, we're basically in a situation where we have too much money. He's got all this money that he needs to spend on more options. And there really aren't any other viable strong buy companies that are worth a lot of money. So we could go ahead and do some on some less valuable companies, companies with a smaller market cap. But uh, in updating my spreadsheet between the last episode and this one, one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to have Hartmax and Itochu enter some industries that are larger than the ones that they're in so that they can make some uh, operational income rather than just extraordinary income off of options. And that will increase their stock prices and hopefully give them a premium, which will have a triple whammy effect on the options that we have on those companies. So I took a look at um, these top three, because we've already entered uh, internet service with Hagemeyer. And uh, there's a unique situation brewing with PBR that we can take advantage of. So what we've been doing here, PBR had such a large market share that we couldn't really grow profitably. So what we had him do is we had him buy options on the top five or six, I forget how many uh, stocks here, and then had him grow negative. And that kept these uh, returns nice and high. And with them growing like this, their stock prices have just jumped through the roof. And ExxonMobil here is actually trading at his peak. This is the highest he's ever been. So what we can do is we can sell off PBR even though he's not at his target price and then have one of our companies, HeartMax or Itochu, enter the Integrated Oil Services Company. We can have Hagemeyer sell, um, sell calls on the members of the industry, and that will uh, represent a whole lot of money, and so he'll have a lot more invested in options and hopefully make a lot of, mon a lot of money on it. Now, the only way that he'll do that is if this industry continues to overexpand. Now, if we give up our share, our ownership of PBR, he will stop growing negative and he'll start growing positive. And then if we also enter the industry with, say, HeartMax um, and set his growth rate to a ridiculous high rate, you know, all, the, all these returns will come down very quickly, especially with the demand negative. All right, and so... What we're gonna do is, first of all, we're going to disentangle PBR from all his extracurricular investments. And then we are going to um, sell some of his assets to, I think we're gonna have HeartMax do it. Sell uh, like about 100 billion of his business assets to HeartMax so that he can grow um, from a, like a 30% um, market share on up to whatever he wants to. Um, and we're going to explore the math between um, whether or not it's more profitable to sell the company and then do an extraordinary dividend or if we should do an extraordinary dividend first and then sell the company. All right, but first we have to disentangle him from all these extracurricular investments that he's made. So first of all, we're going to... Uh, cover all of these futures. Then we're going to sell off all of his options. We're going to sell off his silver. Uh, here's his silver. And then we'll do the math on whether or not we should do, uh, then we're going to sell uh, 
assets to part max, and then we'll do the math on uh, which which uh, method is most profitable. And I'll get into that later. So right now, let's uh, let's first of all start by covering all of these uh, futures that he has, and uh, then I'll sell off his silver, and then I'll be back. All right, so we got rid of all of his futures and, and uh, uh, commodities, so now we need to get rid of the options. So uh, we're just going to go down the list. Um, looks like he's making just tons and tons of money on all but two of them. Uh, Mobile, he's losing money on, and Phillips, he's losing on. But all the rest of them are up like 4x. All right, so uh, we're going to go ahead and sell all these off, or um, sell all of these off, and then I'll be back. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to buy about a hundred billion away in, of these assets. And we're going to have Hartmax buy them. He's going to have to borrow to do this, but he has the credit. Oh, he has to enter the. He has to get rid of his his, his, his existing assets first. We need to sell this fourteen nineteen off. There's nobody, we don't own anybody in the industry. How big is Burlington? Kind of small. Let's have the bank buy Burlington and then we'll have Burlington buy the assets. Uh, Raycom Bank give Burlington four billion to cover his debts. Let's go over to Hartmax. We'll have him buy assets from PBR. Okay, now let's go to PBR. He's got 950 billion in cash. He's trading at $34 a share, which is over twice what his stock is, or you know, what his net value is. So the question that I want to answer, and we're going to run the math, is what is it better to do? Is it better to disperse the cash, then sell the stock? You wouldn't think that that would be the best case scenario because selling the stock is worth twice as much as the cash. But the thing is, is that when you um, own less than 80%, of a stock, you have to pay tax on any extraordinary dividends. Whereas when you own 80% or more, that dividend is tax free. So we have to do some math and I've created a new tab down here. And we've got three different scenarios and we're going to run each one to see which one yields the, the best result. So uh, we're going to start by selling our ownership down to just 51% is to make sure that nobody else takes control of the company. Then we'll do a dividend. We'll sell the rest of the stock, see what our total proceeds were, and then subtract whatever taxes Mitsui Marine and Fire has to pay to find out what our net is. We're going to do that with a 51% ownership, an 80% ownership, and a 95% ownership, and see one, see which one gives us the best net result. Okay, so first of all, let's save our game.
And I'm going to do these in reverse order. So I'm going to do scenario three first. All right, so PBR is 95% owned by Mitsui Marine and Fire. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to reduce our ownership down to 51%. So we're going to sell 44% of PBR. All right, so our, our recognized gain on that is six, seven, six, seven, three, uh, eight, oh, six, dot, eighty, nine. All right, so now we'll have PBR do a extraordinary dividend. We want them to have this much plus 50 more. So let's do 810 billion. Due to the large size of this distribution in relation to the company's total assets, tax authorities have uh, ruled that it will be a partial liquidation, lowering its taxable tax cost for tax purposes. Are you sure you want to proceed? Yes. 810 billion. Now Mitsui only owns 51%, so he only got 51% of that 810. So let's put in 810 billion times 0.51. We got 413 billion from that. And now we'll have Mitsui sell the remainder of the stock. Notice his price per share is way, way down. 1355 now. Down from 39 and change. So we sell 51% or sell 51%. did not see what that was. So let me go back to the video and see what that was, that total. Okay, I went back to the video and I've got the right numbers in now. The um, $600 billion figure that was here was just the profit off the sale. This was the actual total amount of the proceeds from the sale. You wanna make sure not to forget the underlying principle. We don't wanna just put in what the capital gain was. We wanna put in the total amount here. And then this was the total amount of the sale for uh, the remaining 51%. Now we need to go over to Mitsui and see what taxes he owes and deduct that. So 378, 499 for a net sale of 1.6 trillion. All right, so now let's do scenario two. We'll restart our game. All right, so this time, instead of selling 44%, we're only gonna sell 15. And this time we're gonna record the correct number, which in this case is 391,854. Okay, we'll have PBR do a dividend for 810 billion. And this time we'll multiply it by 0.8. We got 648 billion off of the uh, dividend. Now we'll have Mitsui sell the remaining 80%. And the proceeds was six or 760, 141.7. Now let's go over and see what the taxes are. Much lower because we didn't have to pay taxes on the dividend. Taxes 316,099 for 1.4 trillion dollars, less than this one. Now let's look at scenario one where we retain full ownership. We just do the dividend and then sell the stock as a, as a whole. So this time we're just gonna have PBR do the dividend now So this number is a zero, and this one is 810 billion multiplied by 0.95. Okay. And he's trading at 1376. We have Mitsui sell all 95% of him. And the 
proceeds comes to 852456.4. All right, and now we go over to Mitsui and put in the taxes. 262.698. So as you can see, the most profitable version is scenario three where we sell off 44% of the stock because the stock is worth more than the cash. And we make an extra almost, well, we make an extra 250, 200, what is it? 270 um, billion dollars doing it this way. All right, so uh, that's what we're gonna do. So let's restart our game. And uh, first we're gonna sell 44%. Then we'll have PBR do an, a dividend. And then we have Mitsui sell the rest of the stock. I'm not gonna do anything with this money yet, but when if the um, interest rate goes up, we're gonna be buying bonds with it. For right now, we're not doing anything, uh, anything more with it. So let's go over to HeartMax and set his management settings. He is grossly incompetent, so let's set our uh, R&D to 25%. Let's set our growth rate to 30. And our dividend We'll leave alone. We'll leave the dividend alone. That two percent. Okay. PBR has already increased his his growth rate from negative ten to twelve percent. Here's us. We're losing money right now, but we'll start making it soon. As soon as we reform our management. Okay. So the returns have already reflected the downturn what we want to do now before these stocks decline is we want to start selling um, call options on them or buying put options on them and we are going to use Hagemeyer to do that okay so starting with uh, PBR and then Exxon thing about selling call options is that there's a limit to how much you can make. Um, the most you can make is what those call options are worth. Uh, basically what you're doing is you're selling, uh, selling someone the right to buy the stock at a certain price. So um, basically I collect the money now and if the stock price goes up, I'm going to lose money, but if the stock price goes down to zero, then I can keep all the money that I made from the sale. So my losses are potentially unlimited, but my gains are limited and capped at the value of the call option. So what we're going to do is we're going to buy put options. Put options are basically the right for me to sell the stock at a certain price. So if the stock price goes down, I can sell the stock at today's price for the price of the, the strike price of the option. Like for instance on uh, PBR. It's currently trading at 13.10. So let's say I sell the, the put option at 13 and the price goes down to six. I basically have the right to sell the stock at $13 even though the price has declined to $6. And that's what we are going to do is we're going to sell put options and uh, we're going to make them all the way out because it's probably going to take a year maybe longer and it depends on what happens with the price of oil uh, we may have trouble finding counterparties with them being this expensive may have to do smaller blocks all 
right, so I'm going to buy all the uh, put options I can on PBR, and I will be right back. All right, it's kind of a disappointment. We were only able to get, uh, where is he? What's the deal? Where's PBR? Oh, it's put options down here. <laughs> we were able, only able to get 12%. Um, there were only three counterparties that could afford to do any options of this size. So that's fine. We're just going to move on to Exxon. His market cap is a lot lower. So we're going to sell put options or see me buy put options on Exxon. I'll get as many of those as I can and I'll be right back. All right, once again, could only get 12% before I ran out of counterparties. Here's Exxon, got 13%. All right, so uh, let's go to projection. Next one up is total petroleum. Still got plenty of cash, so I'm going to try to buy puts on Total Petroleum. Get as many of those as I can, and I'll be right back. All right, we've sold puts on 100% of total, 90% in April, 10% in May, because we got into May, we were buying them 1% at a time, because uh, that's all we could, all the counterparties we could, uh, that's all they could afford. We're already up on total petroleum. We're up here, we're up, we're up, up, they're all up. So, so far so good. I think we can go ahead and sell short Exxon and PBR. Um, since we can't find counterparties, we can just sell the stock short. But I'm the one that has to do that. Hagemeyer can't do that, but I can. All right, let's go look at the oil industry again. So Texaco is the next one up. It's trading at a nice high premium. Income is supposed to be going up, but uh, we're going to try to fix that. So first, let me sell them short. Now let's go over to Hagemeyer and see if we can't sell some put or buy some put options. Still got a bunch of money. A lot of his call options have been settled on May the 15th. And um, hopefully we can get this done before June 1st so we can do a new batch of uh, strong buy options. We're losing a lot of money on Huawei networks. Despite the fact that his price is flat, our options are worth very little comparatively. We will hope for the best there. All right, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be buying puts on Texaco at 27 a share. And based on this price, we can probably buy them 5% at a time. So I'll buy all the options I can on uh, Texaco here, and I'll be right back.
All right, we got 100% of Texaco that we sold put options on. Uh, Hallway's not doing any better yet. And it's still May. Let's see if we can get one more. Uh, mobile. Electronical Phillips. Let's we'll take a look and see which one has the bigger market cap. Uh, this is Nomura. All right, so mobile has a 69 billion market cap. And Conoco Phillips is 77. So we'll do Conoco. Okay, we've made it to June, which means it's time for us to find out who's rated for strong buy. Just want to peek at Huawei Networks. The stock price is down, so we're going to lose a bunch of money on that one. We're losing on this 10% of Colgate, too. I forgot that we had that one outlier for June. We made all of our money in uh, May. But we're making money on all of these. It's not really a lot of money yet, but it will be. It's going to take more time for these. All right, so uh, let's go to our database search. There are 56 companies total that are rated for strong buy. Seven that are above 50 billion. So let's start with those. So Baidu, Dr. Pepper, Hallway Networks is rated strong buy despite the fact that his price isn't up. JP Morgan, Pioneer, we already have. Shanghai, we just bought some and had them settled in May. And Toyota America. This looks like pretty much the same group as last month. Very strong. He went all the way up to 33 and now he's back down to 26. His income is going down and the industry is deteriorating. He's working with a capital shortage, but he's got plenty of credit, except we have him frozen. He's losing money on options. So we don't really want to sell him. We don't want to buy calls on him. He's unless we unfreeze him. Why do they have him rated as a strong buy? I don't see any reason for him to be rated as a strong buy. I mean, his earnings are on the way down. I mean, they're just barely above what they were for last year. 73 cents a quarter last year he's at 74 and with us how, how big are we growing there we're growing huge here and above the industry norm for for this one he's very capable let's drop his r d to six I just, uh, I don't trust that that's going to go up. So uh, let's recall our list here. Dr. Pepper. Uh, here's A&P. He's way up. Dr. Pepper supposed to go way up. He's already trading pretty high, but he made it to 102 not that long ago. A few months ago. 
So I guess they figure he's going to get back up there. And with that much income, I'm sure that, that's right. Let's just double check. Making money on the index. And except for this one, he's making money on the uh, options. All right, so we will uh, we'll buy calls on him for next month. Alright, so we bought them and the price was going down as we bought them. Went from 88 and change down to 78. So we are showing a, a loss right now. Hopefully that will turn around between now and the middle of July. Uh, so anyway, it's, that's, that's just a real disappointment right there. But we got a week. For him to turn around. We need him to jump to 40, 40 bucks in a week. It can happen. It can happen. Let's see, 32. Yeah, we want him to go up to 40. Go up to 40 in a week's time. All right, let's see where we are. Okay, so let's see where we stand now. We've got 233 billion in cash still. 234 billion tied up in options. We haven't really made any money since the last episode on options because uh, we're losing money on uh, Huawei. So let's take a look at our list again. Oh, Donaldson is suddenly back on the radar. His earnings are going up. He's very capable. He does not have a debt problem. He's trading at 3x, three times his value. He peaked at 38.70 and is heading down. They have him listed as a strong buy. People are over expanding, but he's got a nice return. So let's uh, let's buy options on him. Um, it's only going to be a month from now, so let's see if we can't make a profit on those. Make them for 33. I'll buy all I can for middle of July and I'll be right back. Based on the results we're seeing, we may have to rethink buying uh, call options on the ones that we've already recently purchased them before but uh, our put options are doing well we're up uh, let's see about 20 billion so far on these which is kind of surprising I didn't expect it to happen that quickly all right so Donaldson we just did we already looked at Dr. Pepper and Huawei we already did uh, JP Morgan Chase so I'm gonna skip them for now and look at Komatsu Income is down and still going down. So why is he a strong buy? They're predicting 117 and he's currently at 77. Uh, he's in a decent debt situation. His stock price isn't at that big a premium. He's in an industry that's deteriorating. He's making money on the index and losing money on his options right now, but we're betting the same direction he is. We're trying to lower these now, so he may make money on these in the near future. 
with this heavy machinery, we had did options on uh, Caterpillar and did okay. And uh, growth is negative 10, and yet these guys are still killing it. These returns are even lower than they were before. I'm not going to take a chance on this on this group here. So let's go back to our list. Uh, next semiconductors we did before and Toyota America is a strong buy. I don't remember if anybody has options on him or not. 1956, so he's at about double his value. Got enough money to pay off his loan. His income is up. We have don't have any options on him right now so let's buy some options on him I'm not sure how much of him is owned let's see what percentage we can get let's make this uh, 20 and we'll set it for July actually let's double check our date what date is it it's currently June 12th so one one month from now that's fine just wanted to make sure it wasn't after June 15th. All right, so I'm going to buy options on Toyota America, and I'll be right back. So it's June 15th, and we have almost gone through a half a year now without looking at any of the rest of our stocks. We've only been working this experiment and uh, we're going to need to get back to managing our stocks. I also um, added all the bankrupt companies that the bank has to our list. We have a total of uh, 48 industrial stocks plus the five insurance companies in the bank um, for a total of 53 now. But um, I really wanted to have all of this money invested in options. It's just that it's taking so long to do. Just not sure how I want to proceed. I want to uh, just go back to working our stocks or try to find more options to buy. Let's uh, widen our search on our database. To, uh, 25 billion and up gives us 20 results all right let's look at some of these that we haven't looked at before we've got a bunch in entertainment here he's up and still well he's headed back down headed back down that's fine Losing money on Texaco, but that's going to turn around. Returns are pretty good, and we're overexpanding. Uh, we need to have NBC buy CPI and merge them in. Buy back these bonds and pay off the debt. All right, let's bring our thing back up again. Uh, we were looking at Capital Cities and CBS. Let's take a look at CBS. His income is up but dropping. So again, not going to trust it unless he's trading really low which he's not. Capital Cities is not trading low either. Okay, Palmala, we lost money when we did hit. Well, we made money, but then we had that one ten percent that we lost money on. All right, let's look at Gannett. Income is flat, but going up. That's more like it. 
income that's growing going up. Because they're only they're only predicting a 10 point or 11 point upswing. Uh, he's he doesn't have the best credit rating, but it's still an A. Let's look at the industry. BCI is the one we're looking at. It's got a nice high return. Highest in the industry. Growing at a huge rate, as is everyone else. And he's trading at three times his price. They're only predicting a 10 point swing. All right, let's take a chance. Let's buy some options on Gannett. I'll buy them all up and then I'll be right back. We now have 100% of Gannett. So let's see what's next. done both of those two so Kmart and then Kellogg oh, I think maybe somebody already owns Kmart options and that someone would be Dayton Hudson I believe let's go look yep right there Dayton Hudson so let's move on to Kellogg income is up and still going up. Finally one that's still going up. He's got an unbooked profit on commodity hedges. He has uh, options, one that he's making a lot of money on and one that he's breaking even on. And this one over here he's losing a little bit, but still he's up overall. Fine as far as debt goes, he's only trading at just over two uh, times his net worth. He's in the packaged foods industry and the returns are pretty good. And he's growing at a huge rate on top of it. So let's buy call options on him. I'll get these done and I'll be right back. I'm starting to feel better. This one, the price started going up as we were buying them, which is good. Let's see how much cash we still have. So we still have a lot. I mean, this is just, these are all real small. I think maybe we need to uh, look further afield for larger places, you know, where we can put bigger chunks. Because otherwise, we're going to use up our entire month doing just this. So, um... I wonder if maybe we should buy like actual stock, like 19% of the actual stocks that we think are going to be profitable long term. Um, either that or we could buy an insurance company or a bank. And since the interest rates going to be tend to be on the high side, we probably want to by a insurance company and just have him invest in bonds. Um, you could also buy gold, considering how low it is now. That is a good price. Let's uh, let's put how much do we want to put? Let's put 150 billion in gold. So at a um, thousand an ounce. See, let's start with ten thousand. That's one hundred and six billion. So let's buy another four thousand. Okay. So we'll go with that for now, and um, we are growing at nine percent. Our management is still grossly incompetent. 
we want to go ahead and change the managers since we changed industries. All right, I think we need to work our stocks. Uh, we have a bunch of uh, all of our all of our financial companies, the insurance companies, and the bank are going to be declaring their earnings here in about a week's time. So let's go and work our stocks. So we remove PBR. Let's delete him. And we put Artmax. Maybe there he is. Into integrated oil companies. He's got a 11% market share. Has four, five, six, eight in assets. That's the other thing that we could do with the cash is we could disperse uh, whatever excess cash we can spare so that Hartmax can pay off his loan. Only problem is, is that would uh, bring down the value of these options. Tochu is now showing a profit on his options. Mark Max is showing a profit on his options. Let's see. Yep, the Itochu options are up as well. These are all still up. So we're doing well. All right, so what we need to do basically is we need to work our stocks. Let's go look and see what we can do. First with Cabot. I have notes on hand that we need to lower the growth rate and lower the dividend. So the growth, the demand growth here is negative three and we're growing at 12 and we have a huge 5% dividend, which is not that bad really. Since we have all this excess cash, so let's just reduce our growth rate to 1%. Our earnings are way down, but we're still very capable. AT&T here, his earnings are down as well. And we have him frozen. Imagine we have all of these guys frozen. We can buy Pan Telecom, and uh, I think this is British Telecom, and uh, Telebras, and whatever that one is. We can buy those and add them to our revenue stream. Let's just double check that we are still very capable and don't need to increase our R&D. Okay, so we do. Um, let's make our R&D. Wow, do we really wanna make it 17%? Let's just make it nine and see what happens. Okay, so we're growing at 1%. Our interest rate has jumped. We may be buying bonds soon. And the GDP growth is up too, which is excellent. All right, so we're not going to lower the dividend, but we did lower the growth. So we're done with that one. Let's go look at Toyota. Here, our earnings are down, but going back up. We're very capable. And we're spending 15% on R&D. So we can lower that to six. We're only growing at 1%, so we don't need to change that. So just lower R&D is all we need to do to 6%. And we can pick up uh, Pengu here.
That's all we're going to do for him. Alright, let's go over to UTX. His income is up and still going up. We're very capable but spending 12% so we can lower that. We don't want to buy anybody. Demand growth rate is still negative so we'll leave this at 1%. We'll lower this to 6. Alright, Nomura. He is way down and still going down and that's primarily because Profits off the stock index count toward his operational income, and he hasn't been investing in the stock index for quite a while. He's got uh, silver. Let's see if he's making any money on it. He's making 30 billion. Or what the um, stock index is going to do. Hard to tell exactly with the interest rate this high. It's been two years now. Well, almost. I mean, this could keep going on for another three years. We haven't really gone up at all since we started this episode. So, um... Was it April 15th or something when we started? Let's look and see what the projection is for Rakem Insurance. He's a strong sell, and yet income is going up. I think what we want to do is we want to, now that the interest rate is up to 11 and a quarter, let's start buying some bonds. Uh, let's get this excess cash invested in bonds. I think I'm going to buy a bunch of bonds too and transfer those to Rakem Insurance and have him give them to the bank. That'll lower its expense, its interest expense, and then also generate some additional income. And plus, he's only worth like He's let worth less than two trillion, 1.8 trillion. So, with uh, you know 18, 19 trillion in assets, but only 10 percent of that being um, unencumbered by obligations and liabilities, I think we want to triple or, or quadruple that. So he's got three trillion in cash. Let's sell another three trillion of mortgages, and I'm going to start buying bonds, and I'm going to have the insurance companies use up their excess cash too. All right, so uh, let's go to other buy or sell sell prime mortgages, and I'm going to start buying government bonds. This is going to take a little while, so I'll fast forward, and I'll be back in a minute. Alright, so far I have bought uh, three and a half trillion dollars worth of government long bonds. Rickham Insurance, I had him buy a trillion worth of government long bonds. And I'm in the middle of having Mitsui Marine and Fire buy another trillion worth of long bonds. But it's July 13th, so I want to go over to Hagemeyer and take a look at the options and see how we're doing. And it looks like we're down. Pretty much on everything except Kellogg here. So we're going to have to rethink buying options on the ones that we've already done options for in the recent past. 
Um, our sample size is still pretty small. We're still getting used to this. It may be that it's more effective to, to do this strategy every other month rather than every month. Um, we just need some more time to, uh, to figure out what the best, best and easiest way to do it is. Um, still about the same on all of these. Still up a little bit, but got a long way to go before we make a maximum. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to have Mitsui Marine and Fire buy um, another 1.2 trillion or so in bonds if I can get that many. And um, when I'm done with that, I'm going to take my bonds, uh, donate them to an insurance company that I will buy, and then I'll merge that with um, Rakem Insurance, and I'll have him send the majority of those bonds down to the bank. All right, so I'm going to proceed with that, and I will be right back. All right, we've bought all the bonds we possibly can. If I try to buy any more now, the uh, amount of bonds that I can buy at a time is only 195 million. So basically if we wanna buy the rest, it's gonna take hours and I don't really, it, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't make up enough money to really make it worth it. So uh, what we have with Mitsui is he's got 900 billion now. We were able to get about uh, 600 to 700 billion dollars worth of um, bonds bought for him and Rakem Insurance picked up a million, or excuse me, a trillion and I picked up um, all those, so four trillion. So what we're going to do is we are going to buy a, a uh, shell of a insurance company somebody that has no stocks or um, any significant. All right, so the market just declined. I'm glad I didn't buy index futures. It's like, here's one that's possible. That they would be way overpriced. Let's uh, see what else is available. How about Affleck? He has no stocks, he's got bonds and some liabilities and he's trading at less than his value. So I'm going to buy him and let's see how many bonds he has. So he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sets of bonds. Pretty sure I'm going to have to sell those off in order to merge with Rakem Insurance. Rakem Insurance has 1, 10, 11, 12. Is that right? Okay, so that's 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, so we can have three, or we can give some of these to somebody. Who can we give these to? Who doesn't have a lot of bonds? All right, Progressive doesn't have a lot of bonds. Let's just have Rakem Insurance donate all these uh, low numbers of bonds, um, anything less than 10 billion. We'll give those to Progressive and I'll be right back.
Brigham Insurance still has seven different bonds and uh, or corporate bonds, and I have 13. So we need to uh, have Rakem Insurance donate five of his corporate bonds to his subsidiaries. So let's see who we can give those to. Um, this is Progressive, and he's got room enough to take five more. So we'll just take the smallest four, or excuse me, smallest five, and uh, give them to Progressive. All right. And uh, then I'll give all of my bonds to Affleck and then merge Rickham and Affleck together. Affleck now has 13 different bonds. Uh, Rakem Insurance has two. So we are now going to merge Rakem Insurance with Affleck and we are going to liquidate Affleck into Rakem Insurance. Only cost a hundred million to do that for a three and a half trillion dollar company. Wow. Stock index is way down. Really glad we didn't buy the index now. But uh, I think I should at this point because with all that additional bond income, his uh, price should go up. Um, so we're going to give a lot of these bonds. Oh, we haven't liquidated Affleck yet. So let's buy back these bonds and then liquidate him. Pay off our loan too. Well, I guess that really doesn't matter. Once we merge him, it's not it's gonna get paid off automatically. Alright, so let's merge. Or wait, let's liquidate. That's what we need to do. Helps if you have the right one selected. All right, so we've got almost five trillion in government bonds. And we want to give, uh, let's see, 3.4 trillion of that to Rakem Bank here. He's got all the corporate bonds he needs. So we're going to have Rakem Bank contribute 3.4 trillion long bonds. Okay. So now he's got 4.5 trillion in net worth. And his liabilities, you'll notice, have been cut by just over $5 trillion. So his income should go through the roof and hopefully he'll gain a, uh, a premium to his stock price as a result. Okay, so I know we've been going for a long time now. I think probably we're gonna end it here. Um, but before we do, let's go take a look at Hagemeyer and see how he's doing. Uh, gold is up, so we should have a nice little bump. Picked up another 60 billion here. So um, let's take a look at the options. Tochu is the only one we have left on our call options. 
our put options have gone up some more. Uh, breaking even, roughly breaking even, up 2 billion, up 9 billion, up 12 billion, up 12 billion. So I like the way all that looks. We're up 64 billion, 65 billion on our gold. And he went up to, really, he went that high? I didn't realize he went that high. If he's on the way down, let's go ahead and cover it then. Small profit today is more powerful than a slightly bigger profit tomorrow, and certainly bigger than a loss tomorrow. Yeah, and see he's going down. Oil's on the way down too. So, let's see, where is it? We're, it's August 19th, so we'll probably hold off until September to buy any more options. It's a little late in the month to try to do that. Um, but we might look at uh, buying some crude futures. Um, we definitely need to uh, look at maybe doing some swaps here pretty soon. But uh, I think that's where we're going to end the episode today. When we come back next time, what I would like to do is start getting these uh, bankruptcies and uh, their subsidiaries get them situated. And I think we're going to have the uh, autopilot. I think we're going to have to turn the autopilot on for some of these to get, uh, get them under some kind of management so that they're not languishing in some kind of uh, weird limbo to where we're not touching them. Uh, every year because it, it's been almost a year since we've messed with some of these and uh, they need to have some kind of management and even the autopilot's better than no management at all so uh, anyway that's where we're gonna leave it now we are down 20 trillion dollars this episode which is kind of disappointing but um, we're learning a lot so at least there's that all right so uh, thank you for joining me I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share. And until next time, this is Rakem saying, have a good one.